We're not talking about heating up a pot, you know, of water in there. We're talking about things, the reactions that are occurring in living cells, and these have to be taken into consideration. Now, the U.S. Department of the Interior recently got into this uh, story, and here's a quote there, and I've got some of it outlined in red, as you can see. But well, let me read the whole thing. The electromagnetic radiation standards used by the Federal Communications Commission continue to be based on thermal heating, a criterion now 30 years out of date and inapplicable today. That was just released in March. And this is one agency finally getting out and saying that these guys, they got their heads stuck somewhere and it's not in, in a place where they're getting sufficient oxygen. So, <laughs> The thermal criterion is really not a very, it's not a useful one because we need something that's biological. And there is a biological response. And this is one of the, this is the work that we were doing at Columbia University because we found that when cells are in trouble, they have a specific set of reactions. Uh, this is called a cellular stress response. It was first identified in connection with uh, an increase in temperature, oddly enough. It was uh, an Italian biochemist, or actually biologist, who uh, was studying uh, uh, salivary glands in uh, Drosophila, and he found that when they were exposed to, to higher temperature, their glands swole, st started to swell, and uh, you got this puffing, as they called it. And this was realized, it was called the heat response, and it was referred to as heat shock. Well, the work we did at Columbia showed that this heat shock was, occur was stimulated by electromagnetic fields as well. We showed it with the power frequency and we showed it with radio frequency. We showed it with cell phones uh, causing this same uh, reaction. And the reaction has a telltale chemical uh, indicator. These are stress proteins. And when you measure the stress protein, the cell is telling you it's in trouble. These stress proteins are designed by the cell to help uh, correct the damage, help move molecules to places that, where they should be. It's a whole, and we don't know all the functions yet because there are about 20 of these stress proteins and it's still being worked on. But there can be no doubt that this is a biological indication of the damage and it should be used as an indication of the damage. And they can forget about the thermal criterion because the, this indication of the damage occurs when there is damage. And you're not relying on some learned scientists, you're relying on what the cell is telling you. And the cell makes no mistakes because it knows when it's in trouble. And I think that this is the important thing that, the, uh, that has come from this research. And the interesting thing, that last point on that slide, the stimuli cause the DNA to start the synthesis of stress proteins. Because what this means, in order for a cell to make proteins, it has to take the DNA, which is a double helix, and has to pull the two chains apart so it can read the code. The code is in between the two chains. They're the bases that connect the two chains. So the DNA has to come apart. So when you see a stress protein, you know that the cell had, has been stimulated to the point where the DNA has come apart. So it's really an indication that you're getting an interaction with the DNA. And it's no surprise that this kind of radiation is causing a reaction with the DNA.